Uh, I didn't realize how tall you were. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that doesn't come across through Slack. Yeah, and exactly. <laughs> uh, so uh, to introduce myself, my name is Mike. I'm the head of solutions engineering at Nihilus. I deal a lot with our customers, hopefully enable them to support their customers more. Let me say that you're very lucky today to uh, be able to have uh, Cirrus here as a resource. I really want this session to just be like, if you have questions for him, interject at any time, um, really given that this is such an intimate setting. Um, yeah, I'd like to treat it as something that, if, an ability for you to learn. Um, to give you some context, Cirrus is the CTO of Persist IQ. Uh, sales automation tool, and I'll let you kick off exactly, I guess, share what, what Persist IQ does. Okay, so um, sales teams broadly do two things. One is they're starting conversations with companies that may not know about them that need that product. And the other one is once you have that conversation started, try to close that business. And up until about three years ago, there weren't many tools that helped you start conversations as an individual with companies. Um, what Persist IQ does is it's a workflow and communication platform for reaching out to companies and getting those conversations started. So uh, Persist IQ is actually a really special customer of Nihilus's because you are our first bank customer, um, been with us the longest, and we've had a long relationship that far exceeds the time that I've been with Nihilus so far. I'm really curious to hear, to think in terms of the history of Persist IQ kind of thinking back over the past several years, how have you seen, can you think of major turning points uh, in terms of your business, in terms of product, in terms of customer support, and also technically that you've seen like grow over the last four years? What would be like sure. the major changes? Um, that's a big question. Um, let me see where, let, let me see if I'm <laughs> answering your question correctly. So. Um, when we started, it was my co-founder and I, we were two people, um, I was more technical, uh, he was more business focused and we overlapped on product. Um, and so I was in charge of building the first prototypes. Um, at the time I was using an API, it was incredibly buggy, it wasn't Nihilus. Um, we had just gotten into Y Combinator and um, one of my batchmates was like, I have a friend, he's working on this company, um, it's a team of MIT engineers and they're building an interface to email. And so we heard that and we immediately switched and that's when we first started using you guys. So, um, so that's the backdrop of when we got started. Got so very early on, you, the, you looked at some other API, so you, did you consider building out email integration yourself? So we had three, actually, integrations at the time. I, I had integrated directly with um, Google's API. Um, I had integrated with this other API and then we were migrating to Nihilus. And when you're one engineer, um, what you don't want to work on is like if you're not if email isn't your business is integrating with email APIs and so for me as a as a founder and entrepreneur I was looking for leverage and now this was an opportunity to get leveraged by one API Exchange Google etc. I don't have to think about it. I have a team of engineers helping for sure. That, yeah. And so how did how did the use of Nihilus at least evolve over the last couple of years as you've scaled your company? So to be honest, our usage hasn't changed too much. Um, it's a big uh, part of our infrastructure right now. Um, I can talk about that if you like. Definitely, yeah. Okay. So um, with our product, I told you we're a workflow and communication. Um, the communication aspect of it, one component is email. So if you're reaching out to a company, you will email people that you think uh, could use your product, you will call them and you will message them on LinkedIn. Um, the email side, we download all your email and we'll send an email through Nihilus. Um, the downloading of the email is to look for information to make sure that you're not following up with someone that you have a meeting with next week. So if I email the company and they've agreed to a meeting with me, it's a bad idea to follow up with that company to try to get a meeting, right? So that's an example of business logic that we use Nihilus for. Um, another one is if you're reaching out to people, you're getting contact information. Uh, that information may be inaccurate, it may bounce. Um, so we download that email, we, we, we look at the emails, and, and, and so that's business logic on the sync side. Uh, and then on the sending side, we send email on behalf of our customers, um, and we use knowledge for that as well. Got it. Uh, can you just talk in general about how you've kind of scaled your infrastructure and like some of the technical challenges you've run into with, with, your with Persis IQ in general? Not even yeah, I mean, I think, you know, 
Uh, I'll just tell one story. So when we started, um, we were on Heroku and using Heroku's Postgres database. Um, you could literally download the entire database and debug. Uh, <laughs> now, you know, we download tenants. Uh, we scaled that vertically with Postgres to the point where um, you could sneeze and the site would go down. That was a very, uh, very stressful week. We knew it was coming. We had planned to go towards sharding um, and had that like coming. And fortunately, we're able to get out um, you know, sharding our database with Postgres uh, using a company called Citus, which is also a fantastic product. Um, and that helped us scale our customer base. Our, te our customer base is tenanted, uh, meaning companies use it, and companies can exist in databases that make sharding fairly easy. Yeah. Cool. What have you seen um, has been the biggest impact that Nows has had? Would you say it was early on in integration speed when you were you know, kind of a single engineer trying to juggle integration? Uh, has it been different insights and in, you know having that email component for your customers taken care of? Yeah. What do uh, you think has the, been the biggest value there? Sure. So early on, it was definitely leverage. Um, you know, one API to integrate with versus um, many, and even within the you know Exchange ecosystem, there's so much variance that it's just you know. Um, so early on it was leverage, and then later on I think it's nice to have a team that's focused on the fidelity of the data across many mail providers. Right, right. That's not an easy task. It's not very well normalized, um, and you guys are focused on that, so that's helpful. What about uh, as far as approaching support, right? That's kind of the context in where we work together a lot. Mm -hmm. um, what, how have you seen kind of Nihilus as a partner um, in, in that aspect of working with the customers that are having issues and what changes have you seen like with the new dashboard um, that have been helpful in kind of pro providing that kind of second level of support for your customers? Yeah, so I think um, you all have done a fantastic job of like communicating with us um, and opening up channels for communication. Um, that's been helpful. Uh, the dashboard is starting to help us out um, in terms of a lot of times issues are are a expectation and transparency problem, what's going on, and uh, that dashboard is one step towards understanding what's going on, and you know we have the same problems with our, our customers, which is there's an issue, they want to know what's going on, what the status is, and so the dashboard definitely helps. And then of course, um, Nihilus as a company has been awesome, that's definitely one of the reasons we work with you. What do you think is something right now that you wish we did that we're not doing for you? Um, I don't think, like for us, and maybe it's just our use case, it's less about new features and more about kind of the, the what Dropbox has done for syncing, which is there were you know, myriad syncing solutions, and they were they just did it the best categorically. Um, and you know, email is the wild wild west. Everyone's doing, all, all the mail servers are doing their own things. Um, the more you can normalize that and turn up the fidelity on that data in terms of speed and quality. Um, the better it is for us. Definitely. Yeah. Where do you? What's on the roadmap for Persis IQ? What are you most excited about right now? Um, so we've got a lot on the roadmap. I've been uh, really heads down on recruiting recently, uh, and, and, and fin finally just getting back to product. But um, we're we're going to be we've been iterating on a dialer. So um, email is one component, but um, uh, communication via phone uh, is a big deal. And so we're iterating on that. Really excited about that. Uh, improving our, our Chrome extension. Our Chrome extension has a, an email finder built into it, an interface to Persist IQ, uh, an interface to Salesforce, um, and so improving that. And, and we also actually inject into Gmail and, and help people's workflow in Gmail. So those are all areas where we've started to scrape the surface in terms of workflow, but improving that, I think, is going to be a big deal. Awesome. Yeah. Does anyone have any questions? Yeah. Um, I was actually curious to hear more about um, the like the thought process when you're sort of thinking about oh because there are these people I see there's like a zillion dev focused like startups to like pick and do like every single piece possible like for you like where do you draw the line for like building your guys yourself on like tooling versus like use of a service I guess more specifically can you think of like a 
I'll like some be like, yeah, we don't need to pay for that, but like build it ourselves. Like, what would be one in that case? Um, it's a good question. Um, I think it depends on how big the team is and uh, what the F level of effort is, and also the maturity of the company. I mean, we definitely took a risk with uh, not less at the stage that, that you were at, um, and <laughs> you know, uh, but it worked out. And um, early on, also the stage of the company, so we were validating ideas. We were still pretty early, so uh, it was okay to take on some risk in order to learn faster. Does that answer your question? Yeah. So you guys have run the product for custom base and correctly developed the early people mature customers. How has the security conversation kind of changed? And what are you doing to enable that conversation? Uh, that's you an interesting Yeah, sure, absolutely. So uh, how have security requirements changed as we matured as a company and our customer base has run the larger one? Is that correct? Um, fortunately, not too much on the email side. And I think one of the questions you have to ask yourself when you're an entrepreneur is the why now? And one of the why nows for Persist IQ is I think people are more comfortable giving access to their email. That or they don't understand it. I, I hope they understand it. <laughs> because, uh, but I think they understand, I think people are more comfortable with providing access to their mailboxes. Um, there's definitely been some companies, a few companies, where it's an issue, uh, and sometimes it doesn't work out, and they're not, they're not fit. But sales is such a big market that that hasn't been too problematic for us on the email side. We've definitely had to do some, you know, security audits and things of that nature. Yeah. Great. Well, thank you, everyone, for listening, and thank you, Sirius, yeah. for absolutely. Yeah. Thank you. Oh yeah. I have one final question. Uh, how many companies have you bought pizzas for? <laughs> one company. <laughs> oh, nice. uh, yeah. No, also, has that been an effective, uh, you know, pizza as a currency and like getting on that pizza? SLA? So, so here's the thing. Here's a here's a story. I don't know if, I don't know if you know the story, but um, basically, like, uh, Nihilus was having a bad day that day. Everyone, every company has bad days. Uh, you know, Cloudflare released passwords to the internet. Um, Equifax just released everyone's private information. <laughs> Every company, big or small, has their problems, including Persist IQ. Um, and you all had a particularly bad day that day. Uh, you communicated it, you got it resolved fast, and in solidarity, I sent you guys pizza to hopefully make the day better. So That was a, yeah, yeah. That was a very nice thing. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> all right. Thank you. All right, thanks. Thanks, Nurse.